In 1947, when India got her independence, the majority of the Indian English had gone west in search of greener pastures. There were an unfortunate few genuine Indian English families who chose to remain because that is where they were born and that was the country they knew and loved. My parents were one such couple and in making that decision to stay changed the course of our lives forever. This is my story of growing up lost in the streets of Calcutta amongst the teen millennials. Outcasts, known castes, castaways, whatever you like, we were like ghosts. We were either visible but non-existent or existent but invisible. Our heritage, colouring, religion and very being put a target on our foreheads, stamped in blood upon the bull's eye. Of that target were the words in English. This is the passage where we lived in Kidapo in the 80s. During the festival of Holi, coloured water balloons were thrown at our chests and heads. During the festival of Diwali, Chocolate bones were thrown at the front door of our house all night long. In the confined passageway, the sound of the explosions was unbearable and inhuman considering my youngest sister was dying in the house. For every atrocity described in the book, there was always a parallel kindness, a sacrifice really, like this little shop who practically fed us for years, gave us food and groceries on credit and most often didn't ever get paid. There was also this little tea shop who gave us milk every day and saved my sister's life. When my father was tipped off that the Naxalite terrorists were planning to kidnap my eldest sister. We fled the village of Dum Dum by night. On arrival in Calcutta, we moved into our new home, which was under the steps. This is where my mother laid down a plastic sheet on which we lived for over eight months. When in India, I worked with Bank of America as president of their charity and diversity network. I was truly at my best when I worked at mental institutes, homes for the aged, children's shelters and slums where people lived in abject poverty and deprivation. During all my work with people, I have always tried to impart two key messages in the words of Maya Angelou. I can be changed by my circumstances, but I refuse to be reduced by them. Two, for anyone looking to improve their lives, they alone have to decide to want to help themselves. Hence the birth of my company called Help Yourself Associates, a life improvement and motivational company.